You've been at my table and you've seen the reactions people come down uh, the aisle at the coin shows and, and they stop at my table and say, they ooh and ah and say wow and, and remark that they've never seen anything like this. And um, tone copper can be very beautiful and um, yet most people think of copper, they think in terms of red or brown. They don't realize that some of the proof coins, because of the fact they were stored in envelopes and left in envelopes for many, many years took on beautiful colors. Back when I was young, a young collector, I remember when the dealers would advertise them as iridescent proofs. But uh, we've kind of gotten away from the iridescent adjective now, but still there, there are toned Indian pennies that are red, some that are orange, some that are green, some that are blue, uh, all different colors. And because, because of the way they were stored, and they're just dramatically beautiful, and yet most people don't really exist because there aren't that many of them. Copper is not a highly reactive metal such as silver would be, and so it takes a lot, uh, lot longer time to achieve the attractive toning than you, than you would get on a silver coin. What I found was that, first of all, when people see, the, see those coins, they fall in love with them. So as a dealer many years ago when I was running monthly price lists, I would buy a toned Indian penny anytime I could find it because I would tell my customers it was the cheapest neat coin they could buy. They should just buy them and put them away. Well, after a while I started saying, well, Larry, if you really believe that, which I did, you should just put them away for yourself too. And so at, 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 at that time, maybe 17, 18, 19 years ago, I just started buying up every pretty toned Indian proof penny I could find and putting them away. I bought them out of auction, I bought them on the wars floor. Eventually people started bringing them to me because they knew I was buying them. And, um, I, and, and at first I was just putting them away, you know, without, without the idea of uh, building a complete collection. And then after a while, after I got a, a certain number of different dates, I thought it would be really cool to have a, a complete collection of these. And, uh, but at the same time, I didn't think that I actually would ever live long enough to do it because I, I just figured there was probably some dates in the 1860s or 1870s that I would never find. But lo and behold, uh, about two years ago, I completed my collection of all dates. And uh, by that time, I'd accumulated a lot of duplicate coins where I had upgraded from here or there, and I'd never sold it as duplicates. So I started putting some of those out on display at coin shows, and what I found was that there was just a massive interest. Like I said, most people didn't even know they, they existed, but once they saw them, they fell in love with them. It's the only area of numismatics where a beautifully toned coin sells for less than an untoned coin. Everywhere else, you read about the beautifully toned coins setting record prices, uh, whether that's in commemoratives or silver dollars or type coins or whatever. The coins with a great eye appeal tend to bring much higher prices. Whereas in the, in the copper coins, there's so much emphasis on red that red coins have been pushed to very high prices and the beautifully toned coins have, have languished. And so I think that's a tremendous opportunity for people to buy uh, great coins uh, at uh, considerably less prices. I, I tell people when they look at certain Indian pennies in my case, uh, if I price one, say, at $3,000, and they look at that and it sounds like a lot because the price sheets are so low. But I tell them, well, that's a date where there were also were, were barber dimes, barber quarters, and barber halves made. And I can probably, over the course of a year, find you 100 barber dimes, quarters, or halves of that date with pretty toning, because they come beautifully toned. And you're going to pay more than $3,000 for every one of those without hesitation but I might, in a year, not be able to find you one single penny like that. So on a comparative basis, uh, I think they're still very undervalued. Uh, they're just gorgeous to look at. Uh, if you look at the populations, uh, we're, so, we're so conditioned now to looking at, at the PCGS population and saying, oh, there's only 50 of these coins, that's a low pop coin. Well, you look at a lot of these pennies, there's only four or five of these coins. And uh, it, it would shock people to know that despite the fact that in all the barber issues, you look at any particular date, there's dozens of 67s graded. And 
well, if you look at the, at the uh, proof in the appendix, you'll find that almost half of the series, there isn't a single MS, uh, proof 67 coin graded, other than just the two or three dates that come particularly nice. Um, most of the coins, that, if you look at the MS67 pop, or proof 67 population, you're looking at one, two, three, or four coins. And that, in any other series, that would be considered extremely rare. But in the pennies, you can buy an absolutely gorgeous, monster, beautiful coin with an extremely low population at still a very affordable price.